Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mike Ferris. I want to thank you so much for joining and watching me on this. Don't forget to check out the description box below where you'll see a list of colors and materials I'll be using in this painting, as well as links to my Facebook art page at Ferris Art, and also Instagram where you can see other pieces that I've done, and inquire about a custom piece or anything that you see in those other links. So now let's get to the painting. Okay, so starting off, I've got my 11 by 14 inch hardboard canvas here, and I've just drawn out in pencil just a general shape and layout of this nice beach day. So starting off, I've got my palette of cerulean blue, permanent black, phthalo blue, raw umber, some cadmium yellow, and of course, as always, my titanium white. So with that, I'm gonna mix up this cerulean blue, a teeny touch of this black here, and I mean just a teeny bit or it'll take over your everything. And then some titanium white, and I wanna make this dull blue color here and lighten it up like so. And now with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that everywhere for the sky. And just kinda randomly change it up with just different values of white, some lighter, some darker, and that helps to create this sort of cloud effect and gives us a nice marine layer like so. So now I'm taking cerulean blue and some of this phthalo blue and a little bit of titanium white now and changing the value of that blue for the water here and I'm gonna start with this water line like so and try to get that as straight as I can. And then with that I'm just gonna fill in this upper part that you see drawn out up here in between these two lines and this will be for the outer water part right here. Now I'm just getting just a little bit more phthalo blue into that mixture and right in here I'm just gonna add just a little bit different of a value but pretty similar and just sort of fill this area in like so. Now I'm just going to take some phthalo blue and some permanent black and just a tiny bit of that color and then I want to brighten it up with titanium white. And now I want to make this line that's going to start uh, about right here and then just meander down and this will be another change in the water between the breaking water in front of them and then the water that they're going to be standing in. And so this is going to be kind of this brighter, reflective sort of shallow water that's on the sand right here. Now I'm going to grab some raw umber and some of this cad yellow mixture and it's going to create this sort of kind of warm army green color but with this brown hue in it so it's kind of like this sandy sort of shore break color and so with titanium white I'll brighten that up a little bit and then right in here this is going to be kind of where the sand's sort of kicking up within the white water break that's going to be happening here and I'll just go ahead and fill this in. And as you noticed, I'm not really too worried about covering over my guys a little bit and the people standing there because obviously I can still see through it a little bit. And this just goes to show that first layer of coat with acrylic paints is never your finished product. It's always really transparent. And so a lot of times I take advantage of that transparency to not have to worry so much about staying in the lines when I know I'm just gonna put things on top of things in the background. So with that, now I'm just gonna take and I made a, a darker color here now with that phthalo blue and that titanium, I'm sorry. Ah, permanent black, I can't talk. So just a little bit more white in that and not as much now because you can see the difference there and this is gonna be sort of a wave reflection now in this shallow water. And I'll go over that with some titanium white and settle it down a little bit more and make it look more like a shimmering, shining reflection.
And so I'm going to take that color now and also drag that over here. And then put this little indicator down here like so. It's just a little just change in the dimension and just in the value of the color. So now I'm just going to grab some more of that cad yellow mixture with that raw umber titanium white. And this time I did put a little bit more titanium white into this and a little bit more raw umber. So it looks a little bit more on the brown side now as you can see. And it's just a little bit more again a change in value. And so just blocking in color here and there and putting the values basically where I want to see them. Now again phthalo blue and a touch of permanent black and just a little bit of titanium white and with that I'm just going to scratch in the indication of a cruise ship that's in the distance here and just sort of fill it in like so. So now just a little bit of titanium white on my brush and I still have that color in there. And with that I'm just going to kind of glaze over like so. And that just kind of helps fade it out and give it this fuzzy edge and sort of distant look. Like it's disappearing in a way out at sea into the marine layer like so. So now I've got you up close because I want to show you this. I've taken that same color, less titanium white now as you can, as you can see it's a little bit darker. And I'm not going all the way to the edge and it sort of has this fuzzy sort of outline to it now. And that right there is the world of focus photography. That's what makes everything look out of focus like that. So now just taking some titanium white and I'm just going to lightly brush that over the ocean water like so. And that's just going to help indicate the day that's shining on the water and sort of give it more of a marine layer look to it. So now I'm going to take that same white and also brighten this area down here as well. Now I'm going to grab some raw umber and just a little bit of titanium white. And with that I'm going to make the sand color now and basically just drag that in here and change the value a little bit. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more raw umber, sometimes a little bit more titanium white and just however you want to scratch that in is fine. It just creates more dimension and texture in the sand. Now I'm just going to pick up raw umber alone and with that I'm going to go ahead and scratch in right here this line that divides the wet sand from the dry sand and gives it this little lift and shadow underneath the water coming up onto it. So now while I still have some of that raw umber on my brush I'm just going to drag it down into the sand like so and just kind of scratch it in here and there and just kind of add more dimension to it. So a little bit more titanium white now and as you can see I'm just playing these colors back and forth and you can do this however you want and just build more variety and texture this way. So taking that same sand color from before now and I'm taking more raw umber, less titanium white to it and as you can see I'm using it to create these darker areas and these are going to serve as some of the shadows within the breaking wave.
So as you can see with these shadowed areas, I don't want to cover up all that light stuff, of course, because as you know, with changing of values, it's creating more texture and dimension. And of course, not everything is directly shadowed like this. And with some of that color, I'm going to put some of those shadows here and there on this part as well. Now just going to make that same light shallow watercolor, it's some phthalo blue, a touch of that permanent black, and barely any of that color, mostly titanium white, and more white this time, and as you can see I'm going to scratch that in and kind of go over this reflection here, and as I do that it makes it look more like it's a shiny reflection that is settled down into the sand more and makes it look more natural in this way. Now I'm going to grab that same sand color of that raw umber and that cad yellow and this time a little bit more titanium white into that and that's going to be for the reflections of the people into the sand. I'll just fill that in like so. Now I want to take this titanium white and with that I want to kill three birds at once with it and so the first bird is going to be to kind of shrink this ship down just a little bit more because I want it to look a little bit more fuzzy and give that bokeh out of focus more dramatic in that way and then so also with that I want to add more titanium white as well to the horizon because in a landscape as you get closer to the horizon during the day the sky gets a little bit brighter and because this is out at sea and I wanted this to be like a marine layer out there I wanted to use white and also to scratch in between where the sky meets the water and give it this haze to it. So you got the haze look, you got the ship shrinking and the fuzzy look to that more and then you've got the white that's being added as well more to the bottom of the landscape like so. so. Now I'm going to take some of this white and just a teeny touch of raw umber, like a pin drop. And with that, I kind of want to just create this base coat of the breaking water right here where the wave's crashing. And so I'm kind of doing these swirly motions with the corner of my brush and I don't want to cover everything up. I want to leave some of that lighter color and see right here and here, those dark spots are your friends. You don't want to cover all that up because those are the shadows you want popping through that to bring out the dimension. And I also don't want to cover up the lighter area up top either because that changes in the water in the way that sun hits it and the way that shadows come together with it. So I'm just going to kind of scratch that in and leave some of this showing. And then on top of that I'll get more titanium white like so. And so we'll just play these values back and forth and allow all of them to show through here and there and this will create this dimension of this nice looking shore break. So now I'm going to get that shadow color again, that raw umber and a little bit of cad yellow. And no titanium white this time. And so with this darker color I want to reinforce some of those shadowed areas and kind of scratch them in like so. And as you can see these shadows now, some of them are lighter, some of them are darker. And so even in the shadow play there's going to be different values. And so this is what acrylics is all about. It's all about the values and how you change them back and forth and how that creates the realistic dimension that we're going for. Okay, so now I'm gonna get just a teeny tiny bit of raw umber and mostly titanium white, and then just a tiny bit of that color and mostly this matte medium which I use to make my colors transparent. And so with that, I wanna make these transparent bokeh lights now, these sun kisses that are hitting the water directly. And so I'm gonna push down with my brush and I'm gonna twirl it in a circle and then I can also brush out like so with matte medium on my brush and it just creates this transparent look to it like so. 
So depending on how you want to do these, you can just brush them in or you can push down on your brush and twirl it in a circle like you see me doing there. And then you can also come back in and adjust them to be smaller or bigger or whatever you want to do, but this is up to you. So depending on how hard you push down or not determines how big you want your bokeh light circle to be. So in proportion to what you have, I'm doing mine about like so. And so with that, I'm just going to go over some of the water here and just kind of randomly just put these faded lights in all over the place. And I will change the values of lighter ones and more fuzzy ones. And then on top of that, we're gonna just do pure titanium ones that do have solid lines. And this is what creates that bokeh photography effect when you have the different varieties of the lighter and the more faded and then the solid color ones. So as you can see, some are more opaque, some are more see-through, and that just depends on how much matte medium I'm gonna use and if I use any at all. So just varying this value of more opaque and less opaque back and forth and creating more of this bokeh realistic effect. Okay, so after playing some of these values back and forth, I did cover up some of my shadows. And so now I'm just gonna take that same shadow color of raw umber and a touch of that cad yellow, no titanium white, and just gonna scratch that back in like so and re kind of discover and redefine that. And go around some of those bokeh lights like so just to make it more settled down in there. So now we're going to take a break on the ocean and all the background now and do the people now. And so with that, I'm going to take some phthalo blue and a touch of that permanent black. And I'm just going to start filling in for the head and bringing it down. So now I want to zoom in close because now I don't have very much of that paint on my brush because I did fill it in. And so with the rest of it left, I'm just going to barely touch the canvas on the very outside edges like you see. And it creates this fuzzy edge to it that you can kind of see through. And by doing this, this is what's going to create that bokeh out of focus effect by giving it that hazy rough outline like so. So that's just one of three methods that I want to show you guys. That's the first method there. So now I'm just going to bring some more of this color down to block in for his neck and just down into his back there. I will change the value of his body, but up here will be this color for now. Okay, the other method now is I put barely any color on my brush as if I ran out of paint almost. And it's just the opposite way. I'm just going to start with the edge first and just barely again touch the canvas and just scratch in this fuzzy line like so. And as I bring her hair down like that, you can see it's this faded look. And now what I wanna do is I wanna show you right like this, how I go in with this darker color now. And notice that I'm not taking it all the way to the edge because again, I wanna leave that fuzzy edge on the outside of it. And so that's the other method there. So either way you wanna do these, you can do the fuzzy edge first or block it in and then use the rest of your paint to do the edge outside of that. It just depends, I do them interchangeably. It just depends on how I feel that day or how I choose to do them, but those are two, and there's a third one I will show you in just a moment. Now I'm just gonna take just pure raw umber 
And with that, I'm just gonna change the value just a little bit again, down on his arm right here. And I'm just gonna block that in here. And on the gal as well, I'll block in some of this raw umber area as well. And then down in the back here, I'm gonna put this little fold in his lower back to indicate some definition or maybe a little bit of muscle down there. So I'm gonna use this raw armor to kind of create that indication there. And just here and there, just kind of blocking little details and more like indications rather. So on the grill as well, I'm gonna come down here on the sort of the lower part. And then back on the guy, I'm gonna do his legs now. And this again is just raw armor that I'm putting in for now. So now I'm just gonna mix up this peachy color here. I'm gonna take some of this cad orange and a little bit of this burnt umber now this time. And then a little bit of titanium white. And with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and scratch in for the back. Now don't confuse burnt umber with raw umber. Burnt umber is a little bit more vibrant of a brown color and brings out a little bit more shine than say the raw umber. So that's why I wanted to use it in this orange to kind of dull that down a little bit and sort of place that within the value of the raw umber that we applied first and so with that i'm just going to scratch a little bit of that uh, a little bit of that into the legs as well and then outside of here i'm going to get his other arm as well with that peachy color Okay, so I'm zooming up close now and I wanna show you this third method here of how I get this fuzzy line. So I'm gonna take just a teeny bit of that paint left on my brush again, and instead of scratching it on, now I'm just tapping the edge of the wet paint that you saw there. And so that's another way to do that sort of bokeh edge is to do a tapping motion on the outside of the edge of your line there and that'll help fuzz that out as well. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and keep blocking in and I'm taking this sort of raw umber color now. I didn't really clean my brush off, and as you can see, it's a little bit darker down below. And then right here as well for the arm. And so just gonna block that in, and then I'll change the value back on this one to fill in the rest. So now I'm gonna take that peachy color again with that cad orange and that burnt umber, only a little bit more titanium white now. And every time I load my brush, so you know, I don't like to put a bunch of color on my brush all at once because if you put too much paint down at once, it's hard to take it off and deal with, but you can always add more paint. So I always add less than what I think I'm gonna need, which usually is the amount that I need. So with that rule, I just kind of stick to that. And so now with that peachy color, I'm going on the female now, on the bottom half now, I'm just gonna kind of scratch that in with some of that darker value as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a different value with this orange. It's cad orange and some phthalo blue this time instead of burnt umber, like I did for the guy. So that's gonna be a little bit more vibrant of a peachy color on the female than as opposed to the guy. So I wanted to do this for more interest because even though they are similar in color, it's not gonna be exactly the same color. And so that adds more realism and more interest to the eyes. You can see they're a little bit different from each other. So here's a little rule of thumb. If you ever do a picture and you have something that looks like it should, but it still looks boring, then take the colors that are on the picture and change just a couple values. And I'm telling you, it'll make a world of difference if you just change the values a couple different places. It's amazing how magical that can be for you. So there you go. And so now with some cat orange and some raw umber, I've made this really dull, very bright, sort of color here and with that i'm just going to go ahead and apply that and make this sort of bathing suit top for the female now just taking some pure raw umber again and i'm just going to kind of 
scratch in around this bathing suit top like so and just kind of settle that down into there. Okay, so now taking some phthalo blue and a teeny touch of that cad yellow and then some titanium white and this is going to make sort of this turquoise bluish type of color here. And with that I'm going to go ahead and apply that into the bathing suit bottom here. Now I'm just going to take some of this phthalo blue and a teeny touch of that permanent black and some titanium white. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and fill in for dude's shorts. And of course I'm going to go ahead and fuzz out the edges of the bathing suit and of the people by either tapping and sometimes scratching it out, depending on what I feel like doing, but either method as you saw works. So now I've taken some titanium white into that shorts color there and I just kind of scratched it in and then took some of the shorts color and knocked it back a little bit to kind of fade it in. And same with the female with some white on the backside here of her. And that just kind of helps serve as some of these bokeh lights that are going to be playing over the top of them a little bit. So now I'm just going to do pure titanium white now, no matte medium this time. And now I'm going to go for the brightest bokeh lights I can possibly do. And of course not covering up all the faded ones so that I don't lose the realistic change of value and effect that that creates. So now just gonna fill those in here and there and make this thing really pop and shine. So now I'm going to pick up some phthalo blue and a teeny touch of permanent black and some titanium white and make this darker blue color right here for a shadow that goes directly underneath both of them. And that adds a little bit more interest as well in this piece. And so in the shadow I want to take some permanent black now and just right underneath both of their feet like so. I want to just take where the direct shadow is right where their feet hits the water and then take that black and just sort of scratch it back into that blue like so and that creates this realistic looking shadow play. So now I'm just going to pick up some titanium white now and with that I'm going to scratch over this shadow a little bit and knock it back and sort of settle that down in there so that even the shadow looks like it's also reflecting into the shiny surface of the water. And with that same white, I'll also go ahead and make this just a little bit brighter in this water area here. So now I'm going to take that dull orange light color again for the bathing suit top. I want to redefine that because I kind of feel like I lost that a little bit and just kind of fill that back in like so. 
Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna take my script liner brush now, lots of water and some permanent black and just sign this piece right here. I wanna thank all of you so much. It means so much to me for joining me and watching me on this and give this one a try. This is very simple and it is a landscape in a way. So there really is no rules as to how you wanna put these bokeh lights together. Just make sure you have variety and value changes and go for it. And until next time guys, happy painting.